Hi everyone. Good evening. Um, I like what Kim said earlier that he doesn't know. I won't say the exact word. Um, thank you for saying that you really don't know anything about Photoshop because I don't either. Okay, none of the South Snippets team does. Do you do you guys know how to use Photoshop? Not know. really, but super oh, basic, Photoshop. like you know, super. Super duper basic, and Kim uh, uses Canva, and it's also what we use. We're all, we're actually going to recommend using Canva, but there are others that I'll show you later. Um, and there are a lot of things you can do, even if you don't know how to use Photoshop. Like Yay. it's not necessary anymore. So <laughs> that's really good news, okay. Bob, because technology is so advanced now that you don't really need a very high level of skill. And there's actually mm -hmm. one site that. Um, lets you that actually designs for you. You just put in all the elements, and it will create the design for you. And all you have to do is choose. It's like you have your own graphic designer <laughs> in your pocket in your phone. So we haven't used that, but um, yeah, we'll talk about that a bit later. So for now, um, like I said, we'll talk about image design. We'll focus on that for today, and we'll deal mostly with art. And art is both science, mostly math, like geometry and stuff and intuition okay i think that's how art is it's a combination of math and intuition and um a lot of the things that we'll do today will be very visual so if any of you is driving or cooking or doing something else um well you're you're here already so just join us but you'll have to tune in to the fb live so that you can focus okay if you're doing anything tonight if you're not then you know very good. <laughs> I'll actually ask everybody to please participate because design is very, very intentional. So everything that you put into the image that you're designing um, needs to have purpose and it has to be grounded on meaning that you want to convey. And to do that, you have to take on dual roles. So you will be the center of the message, but you will also have to think of your audience or your receiver because you have to think of how do I communicate what I want to say in a visual manner? Okay, I'll show you that. It's possible even without having to use any words or numbers, okay? Um, but yeah, most often the content that we make will have to be a combination of books, like words and images. Okay, so like I said, you need to be aware of your audience and this awareness takes practice. So we're going to practice that today. Okay, so I'll, I'll need you guys to participate. I know that your mics are on mute, but I'll ask you to type in your answers to my questions. Okay, very simple. What, what I'll do is I'll show some images and then I'll ask you what you think or how that image makes you feel. So I'll just need maybe one or two words from you guys. And just, I'll give everybody like five to 10 seconds to think and type and then I'll say go and then everybody just send your answers through the chat. Everybody good with that? Yeah. <laughs> okay, all right, so let's practice. I'll show you the first image. Okay, this one. How does this image make you feel? 10, 9, 8, 7, 3, 2, 1. Okay, everybody? Answers? Excited? Exuberant, cheery, tropical? What else? Excited? Yeah. <laughs> Energized, okay. May <laughs> Yeah. Curious. Yes. Hipster. True. <laughs> Jolly. Okay. So I think um there's freedom as well. All right, good. So I think we can say that although the words are different, the feeling is almost the same. There's excitement, there's, there's curious, there it makes you feel curious, makes you feel excited, makes you feel happy or cheery, right? So um, as you can see, we're just a small group, but the perceptions are different because we're human beings. So we have different perceptions. And this is something you have to consider when you design something. You have to be, you have to think of how your image will get across to as much of your audience as possible in the correct manner, like in the meaning that you want to convey, okay? Um, the thing is, the good thing is, the principles that I will share with you today are 
basically consistent across cultures, cultures, uh, countries, demographics, or you know whatever. Um, because basically humans share the same experience. So that's a good thing about design um, is that you can come up with images that will generally convey the same meaning across different audiences. Okay, uh, but of course there will be outliers because you know we're human beings. But think of the majority of your audience. All right. Okay, so that's it for my introduction. <laughs> I forgot to time myself. <laughs> Guys, tell me if I'm if I'm talking too much. Okay, and then be ready to type in your answer. Okay. So. Wait on. All right. So like I said earlier, you have to think visually almost having to do without words. Um, take, for example, these words. It talks about daily servings of vegetables and fruits and, you know, dairy and protein. So it's all words. They're easy to understand. But what if you can do something to communicate this visually? So you make something like this. You have more words, but you also have pictures in different colors and you have different sections, which works better than the first one, right? But what if you can visualize it even more? Now there are no words, there are only pictures and this pyramid, and you have the percentages or the numbers. Getting good, right? Let's simplify it even more and create this plate. So it's more relatable because everybody eats off a plate or maybe a bowl. <laughs> um, so it's highly relatable, like when you see the colors, and the words, you know exactly what it talks about, okay? But there's another way. What if you can condense it even more into a pure image without any words, without any numbers? There's just different kinds of fruits and vegetables, so you know how much you need to eat of everything without really needing any words, okay? So this is what I mean when I say you think visually. And how many steps do we go through? There's one, two, three, four, five steps. So usually when you design something, it takes a lot of time and it, you have to go through a process of distilling the information that you want into just one image, okay? So I think for a lot of people, they get intimidated or they get frustrated when they have to design an image because you can't really get it at one go. Usually you have to go through several drafts until you get to what you want. And then if, even, if when, even if you get to what you want, you still have to show it to others and get feedback because your perception might not be correct. It might not be the same with other people. Like they may not see the same things. So it's possible that you're not getting your message across. So you'd have to get feedback and then refine your image again. So it takes patience, <laughs> just like what we did for, for today. Okay, so let's, Start talking about the principles of design. Um, you can use these for anything, for any images that you're making, not just for, uh, well, not just for like content, because I actually designed this training for PowerPoint presentations for trainers, because I used to manage training. But I, I, I looked at the elements and realized that, yeah, they can be used for um, content. All right, so composition is the way the whole is made up. So if anybody has any uh, background on photography, this is one of the first things that we learn. Um, look at the picture. Okay, how does it make you feel, everybody? That's a question, how does it make you feel? One, I, 10 pala, 10, <laughs> nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, answers please. It feels relaxing, it feels calm, it feels hopeful because there's sun beneath it, uh, behind it, it's balanced, serene, calm. Okay, pretty much the same. It's because of the colors. Sandy and hot, <laughs> makes you feel hot. Okay, because it's in the desert. All right, now I want you to remember this image and contrast that with the next one. And then tell me how you feel about the next one, like while remembering this one. Okay, five, four, 
three, two, one. Feels tens, feels hot, fears, intends. Anger. Hellish, psychedelic. Anyone else? Okay, I think that's it. All right, so as you can see, it's not just the colors, but the way that the photo is composed elicits a stronger feeling, correct? Because the first one is balanced. So it kind, it kind of feels relaxed, but the second one, it's also balanced, but there's more movement and there's more intensity. This is because the, this picture is composed with the golden ratio in mind. Okay, so what is the golden ratio? Um, anybody? Does anybody know what the golden ratio is? None? Okay. So, Donna, were you going to say something? <laughs> I said no, but actually I know. But no. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, 80-20. Mm, I know. That's the Pareto principle, 80-20. The golden ratio is the total of the two numbers before it. Okay, for example, you have one plus two plus three. So three, uh, okay, and then you have two plus three, so that's five, and then you have five plus three, which is eight. Anyway, this sequence was sort of discovered by Fibonacci, and he discovered that this ratio is present in nature, in uh, populations, what he studied was the population of rabbits, how they uh, multiplied. So if you have a population and you just, you don't touch it, you just let it multiply by itself, it's going to follow that sequence. So images follow that as well. Uh, and things in nature, like you can see this in flowers. You see this in the nautilus shell, like, you know, the shell that, that kind of goes round and round. And you see it in space. And so this is present in nature. And so when you compose a, uh, an image, that is that follows this sequence or that follows this number um it makes that stronger and it makes the image feel more natural and more organic okay basically more visually appealing to human beings so let me show you this one okay so this image still feels balanced but it was created following the fibonacci sequence like, uh, how do I draw on this? <laughs> okay. Oh, but it's yellow. So if you look at it closely, it kind of looks like this. Can you see that? Um, okay. To show another example of not just the Fibonacci sequence, this was also created in the rule of thirds. So this one, you might be familiar with the rule of thirds. Why won't it? Okay, here. So if you're again familiar with uh, this concept, this principle, this is used a lot in photography. Like you divide your image or your frame by nine, like three horizontally and three vertically, and then you place the main parts of your image on two of the crosshairs, like, mm, like here, it's placed here. Okay, and those two intersections. So you can place them anywhere, actually. You can place it here as well. All right, so that's a rule of thirds. It, it kind of is the basic when it comes to composition of an image. But most designers now, they say that the golden ratio is more natural. Okay, so yeah, this is the image for the golden ratio. So I'll show you examples. Okay, so we have this girl. Is this a photo of a girl jumping? But it follows that concept, the golden ratio. So it's very, very comfortable. It feels very organic and natural. Same with this. Oh. Okay. This one, so as you can see, it's not just for images. It's not just for photography, but also when it comes to laying out your text 
and your images. If you look at nice websites, they follow this concept really closely. Like they do the math. Also, magazines follow this a lot. Okay, so if you're designing something, it will help if you follow the golden ratio, but you don't need to be too mathematical about it, too strict about it, but kind of feel where the, like, where the small points are, like here. So you know that the tiniest of details in your design have to be in this area, and then the rest of it like, goes bigger. Okay, so that will make your design a lot more um, organic and natural feeling. Okay, do you have any questions about this? No. Man? Okay, okay. I would, I would say that uh, the Fibonacci sequence is kind of advanced because I myself would usually just use the rule of thirds. It's easier, but if you want to be really like sophisticated with what you're doing, then you know you can do this one. All right. So just the last example. Okay, we have a photo of you now these two people, and you won't really notice it, but if you if you look at a lot of photos online like a lot of stock photos and you put the golden ratio on it, you'll see that they're composed this way. Okay. My slide won't move. All right, next concept is unity and harmony, basically the way elements fit together. Okay, so I'll show you two photos. And just in general, just tell me how you feel about them. Okay, 10. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Answer. Chaka. <laughs> Font is uh, confusing, magulo. Yes, conflicted. What else? Confused, yeah. So these are very, these two. Okay, so much to see. I don't know which to look at. Text is unreadable. It's too busy. Oh, next slide, please. <laughs> okay, because it's chop suey. Right? There's no unity. There's no harmony. Like, you have... Let's take the picture on the right as an example. So you have very dramatic photos. And then you have clip art. <laughs> now, a lot of beginners would do it this way. Like, they don't really consider how the elements would look together. They're just concerned about getting the meaning across. And yeah, so you have to be aware that your design is not low chop suey. <laughs> okay, compare that with this one. How do you feel about this one? Just type in your answer. Is organized. Okay, there's too much info, yes. I agree. Too many elements. Okay, there's a lot of info, but more organized, correct. Okay, why is there a lot of information? It's because it too many colors, busy, but more organized. Yeah, because this is a, it's an infographic. Looks happy, but too much going on. And infographics tend to have a lot of details in them. But, okay, sometimes when you have to design something, you will need a lot of, okay, wordy, but organized, more of, yeah. So you will need to put in a lot of elements. So you have no choice but to just put in a lot. And when, when that happens, just make sure that the elements that you use have unity and harmony so that it will sort of look more organized. Yeah, there's a lot of info, but it's not chop suey. It's the same with this one. So this is a magazine spread, a magazine page, obviously. So as you can see, we have a photo of two different ladies wearing different clothes, but the colors are sort of the same, even the background for the first photo, the photo on the right, uh, mimics, kind of, kind of uh, reflects as well the pink background in the second picture, okay? And the text is also, <laughs> I would say bagay. The text is bagay with the content, but it's, it's high fashion. It's simple, okay, it's chic. So yeah, if you're looking at designing something, then you have to consider the elements, if they look well together. If they look 
good together. Okay. Um, let's move on to symmetry and balance. It's the way elements are arranged that, um, you know, just puts equal weights on opposite sides. So it, it can be top to bottom, but it's usually left and right. Okay, I'll show you what this means. Okay. So we got this website. <laughs> I don't think I will need to ask you guys what you think, but you know, just go ahead. What do you think about this? How do you feel about this picture? Just type in like five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> Very clinical. Chic, minimal, minimalist, too plain. Think of it in terms of balance. I'm looking for balance. None? Okay, I'll break it down for you guys. Simple, wordy. Okay, I'll break it down. Look at the elements at the bottom. Like these two. Okay. Like these two are kind of symmetrical. Right? So the weights are, are the same. Like this huge like gray area kind of counterbalances the text here. But you have this big text over here that's not really in the middle, but kind of towards the right. Okay, so that tilts the weight of the image to the right side. So that creates, creates an imbalance between left and right because, you know, intuitively this has to be in the middle, but it's not. Okay, so this kind of design doesn't work really well. Okay, it feels imbalanced. I'm not sure if you guys feel that way, <laughs> but that's how I felt the first time I saw it. Um, yeah, like we definitely could do better. Okay, I'll show you better examples. So there's no symmetry and there's bad balance, but you know, things don't always need to be symmetrical like this one. This one is very symmetrical, like, you know, left and right are exactly the same. Like the, the line in the middle is like, you don't see it, it's not written there, but you can see. Whereas this one is asymmetrical, but it's still balanced. Okay, because asymmetrical designs, I think this kind of follows the rule of thirds. Not exactly, but it does. Um, if you would see the colors on the left, they reflect the colors on the right, but the lighter, like the bigger part is lighter than the smaller, darker shade. Okay, so this creates a balance between left and right. Like you have this huge, heavy thing on the right, but the bigger part is light. And that counterbalances the dark of the right side. Okay, and the right side is smaller anyway. So you can say that this is asymmetrical, but it's still balanced. Okay, think of this one. How do you guys feel about this one? I had to think about this like for a long time <laughs> before I could, you know, figure it out. So just tell me what you think about it. Five, four, three, Two, one. You love the bleakness because <laughs> it's gray and white and black. A bit heavy on the right. Okay. I like that comment. I'll, I'll build on that. Anyone else? How do you feel about it? Well, Anna? <laughs> it's kind of hard, no? I, okay, feel serious. I'm bothered with the borderlines of black because it's not consistent. A lot of blank spaces. Okay. I think, may is on board there. Yeah. <laughs> so I think this design, okay, it makes you think a lot, like I said earlier. And I had to think about this for a long time. But there is balance in this. It's just not, it's not only left and right. I'll show you. It's also back and front. Okay, which makes it very interesting. Um, here, you have this huge image in the back of a leaf that actually extends to, to two-thirds of the way. It's actually up to here. Okay? And then you have images that also extend up to almost two-thirds of the way in front. So it's not just left to right, but the balance is also front to back. Like, you have to, you have to wait and really look at the image before you, you realize that, yeah, it is balanced. Hindi ko lang kita yung back. 
But if I look at it carefully, I will see there's an image in the back that balances what's in front. Okay? So, <laughs> so yeah, I see it now, right? So I think this is the person who designed this was, you know, pretty advanced, pretty sophisticated. That's why they, you know, he was able to create, he or she was able to create something that is very interesting. Aldeba. Anyway, I, I like this because, like, never mind the one without the borders. <laughs> but what he did or she did was there's a huge image in the back that's, you know, light and dark. And then smaller, smaller items, smaller elements in front that balances the big one in the back. Okay? So there. Very cool example. So you can do this someday, but I'm not brave enough to do it myself. <laughs> I am advanced. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'll show you another kind of balance here. So here you have a combination of perfectly symmetrical elements such as the, the couch and then the placement is asymmetrical. Okay, it's very comfortable, right? <laughs> it's so delicious. The colors are delicious. Okay, so you can combine symmetrical elements with an asymmetrical layout such as this one. Okay, just to show you an example, but Everything moved already. Okay, here. I wanted to show you this one. How does this make you feel? Tell me what you think. Okay. <laughs> you really like grays and blacks and whites. It feels emotional. It feels melancholic. I don't know. Design aesthetic. It's emotional. Right? So I'm not sure actually if she's yeah, if she's saying goodbye or, you know, the man is approaching her. But, yeah, it feels sad, right? But I want you guys to stop and think about the next one. How does this one make you feel? <laughs> yeah, Deva. It feels dramatic. In what way? A little more hopeful. Gets better like a noir film. Thrilling suspense. Does anyone else feel like something bad is going to happen? Yes. <laughs> Ominous, yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. So that's what this image shows us. Um, it's the exact same image as earlier. I just tilted it a bit like counterclockwise. Um, this is called the Dutch tilt. Okay, it's used a lot. Okay, a lot on the right. So there's imbalance. You create an imbalance, and this is used in movies a lot. When the scene is suspenseful, or when there's something bad that's going to happen, when it's ominous. Okay, because it, yeah, Brian Hitchcock. It creates it creates the feeling of um, like when you're disoriented. Okay, so when something bad's happening, you will see this a lot in movies. I think you will, now that you're aware of it, <laughs> you will know, oh, that's the Dutch tilt. Okay, that's what it's called. So if you're designing something and you want to ev evoke that kind of feeling, like, hello, mo, wala yung bahay mo, or something, if you don't buy my product, makakain siya ng, ano, ng anay, <laughs> yani. <laughs> you know, if you want to scare your audience into buying your product, then you can use this kind of imbalance <laughs> in your design. Okay? So there, just to show you a very, very simple trick that a lot of filmmakers do. Well, us designers can do this too. Okay. Now we talk about contrast. The way the elements are different from each other. <laughs> Substitute them out with the coffee. The way the elements are different from each other. Um, there are many ways to create contrast. Um, such as this one. So you have two different elements. You have male and female, and then you have black and white, and then you have red as well in the mix. But uh, for now, we'll focus on contrast when it comes to colors, okay? So take a look at these three. So you have low contrast, medium, and high. When it comes to text, please do not use low contrast. Why? Because it's almost unreadable. <laughs> Unless it's your intention to, um, like to have your audience really look at the image, then you, know, you can do so. But in social media, everything's really fast. 
So if there's something uncomfortable and unreadable, you know, nobody will really pay attention. So the idea is to use something with a medium contrast, like this one. Okay, so it's very comfortable. Ang daling masayan, hindi siya masakit sa mata. Unlike the last one. Oh, I don't even want to look at it. Um, so there. So when it comes to text, please <laughs> don't use anything with very, very high contrast or very low contrast. But with images, okay, I'll show you this next one. Tell me how you feel about it. Okay, how do you feel about this image? Okay, five, four, three, two, one. Feels pretty, feels feminine. What else? Girly, it feels dainty and delicate. Okay, fragrant, light and airy. Okay. All right, so this image, well, it feels fresh. Yeah, because we used pink, then it feels very feminine. It feels very soft because the contrast is low between the main image and the background, okay? But what if I, I will also use the flower, but it's this one. How do you feel about this one? It's loud, yeah. It's strong. Contra vida. <laughs> yeah, you're correct, okay. Like a Kenzo perfume ad, right? It's very strong. It's fe yeah, it feels fierce just because the contrast between the main image and the background is very strong, okay? So you can use contrast to communicate something as well, especially your brand. Racist, <laughs> okay. So if your brand, like the message that you want to convey or the image that you want to convey is very strong, then you use colors that contrast really well. But if you have like a very, very delicate shampoo, then you use the, you know, the contrast on the left, okay? And also when you use contrast in this way, you can create emphasis, all right? So they're, you know, mostly dark, but then the light colored ball is the one that draws your eye. So yeah, so that creates the emphasis. So that's how you can use contrast. Um, let's talk about repetition, pattern, rhythm, and movement. It's the way the elements are repeatedly used, creating pattern, rhythm, and a sense of movement. Okay, eh, and daming elements, yeah, no? And daming principles, but I'll show you an example. All right, so never mind the text. This is for my, well, anyway, I used this before. Um, as you can see, the circles with the one, two, three, four, five, are repeated and then you have a, a swish element in the back which leads the eye from the left to the right so you have that pattern so you know that they're of equal importance like all the points are of equal importance and then the swish in the back leads you from step one to step five so you know where it's supposed to go okay this is basically what the pattern or the repetition does okay in your design like so you know they're all important you know that there are steps, right? Like at first glance, you know, ah, uh, okay, so I have five things to remember, all right? Okay, it's the, same, uh, it's the same principle with this spread, magazine spread. So you have the same image on the upper left and then on the bottom right. And what it does is it draws your eye from the top to the bottom to this part. Okay, so you know where to read. Okay, madali siyang masahin because it draws your eye like it, to the direction that it wants you to look. All right, let's take a look at this one. Okay, there. <laughs> Contrast that with this one. What do you read? Ano nakita niyo guys? <laughs> I'm sure you've seen this. Naging meme to eh. Like, kumala talaga sa. Sa salel. <laughs> It's supposed to say sale, yes, thin. But because of the way the letters are arranged, you don't really know how to look. Like it's natural for us to do left to right. Nothing leads you to go S A down to L E. 
Okay, so in terms of design, this is very bad. Contrast that with this one. So, naging memes yan silang dalawa. The shades by design. Like, yeah, however galing. you look at it, it works. Diba? Ang galing, no? So, yeah, very clever, very cool. Correct. So, you know, however you want to look at it, it works. Like, you don't need to lead anybody. But um, if you look at the elements, you also have that uh, repetition and, you know, the pattern when it comes to the letters. Okay. Now, when you use uh, repetition and then you create a break, it creates the emphasis. So it can be for images and it can be for text as well. So images is like this. Okay. So if you want to focus on anything, you can use repetition and then break it. All right. So earlier we said, if you want to emphasize something, you create a different contrast. And this time it's also a contrast, but in terms of the pattern. All right. Now alignment. The way elements are placed, um, that creates order. Take a look at these and tell me how you feel about them. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. The bang smart no mong so <laughs> warped very with the sir. Distracting. Yeah. I suppose you're saying it's bothering. It's an OC nightmare. Yeah. It's a nightmare for monk. <laughs> it's very distracting. Okay. Diba ang sakit sa mata? Yeah. nakaka siya because walang order. <laughs> There's no pattern. Okay? But as you can see, it like it kills us. The nakakaiyak. <laughs> Diba? Parang the first image and the last image, nakakaiyak talaga siya, parang nakakagalit. But if you use this concept correctly, then you're able to create, you know, a very witty design. It's not just a visual design, but yeah, it's a very good ad. So if you're able to use uh, this, you know, you know, lack of pattern, this lack of um, alignment, in your design, if it, if you can use it to catch attention correctly, then it can work for you. Okay. Take a look at okay for you guys to do photography for like food usually, you mga naka flat lay here. So you have very different elements. They're kind of random actually. My damit, my laptop, my you know my gunting, but the way they're placed, the way they're aligned makes the image very comfortable, very organized. Okay, so if you're doing flat lay, um, it's advisable to think of how the elements are aligned so that everything feels comfortable. And it's difficult. It takes a lot of practice. Um, we have a friend who does it really well. <laughs> kami sa kanya, si e -boy. Uh, But yeah, it takes a lot of practice to be able to like create alignment this well. So if you're doing... Um, that is fine. If you're doing design for, you know, your product or your food, <laughs> then, you know, you follow the rule of alignment, the principle of alignment. And even if, you know, things are not exactly aligned, like the photo on the left, but they follow a specific order. Like you can still see the lines really clearly. And then the elements within them work within the boundaries, then, you know, you still create a little bit of organization. Now, yung mga sobrang OC about design, their IG would look like the photo on the right. This one. Like, grabe. Grabe yung alignment niya. Like, even in between the photos, she would plan everything. Okay, this is from Simply White Design. And I took a I took a look at her IG. She doesn't do it anymore. Siguro na pagod na siya. But <laughs> a lot of her work looks like this. Yeah, sobrang galang. Yeah. So if if you have an IG page, then you can do this as well. There's also, you know, I couldn't find it, but there's also one restaurant that took a photo of a whole table, like a very long table, and then yun yung nakalagay sa IG niya. So like, putol-putol yung 
photos, but it's just one long table of different dishes. And then per square, there's still, you know, a, a highlight dish. So, sobrang galing nung, sobrang galing nung pagkaka-layout. Is it, is it, is that what it's called? Puzzle feed? Angelica? I'm not sure. But I really like how everything's so aligned. Oh, Reynolds Wrap. Is that what that was? Niba restaurant. But yeah, let's check it out later <laughs> when we're done. See Reynolds Wrap. All right. Oh, that's cool. Okay, I learned something. It's called a puzzle field. Feed. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Okay, Angelica says you can do that to have to be but four images, four square images, correct? They have to be four square images on FB. Okay, so even your text has to be aligned because if they're not, then, you know, they just feel awful. Um, consider the text, uh, the font that you're using, okay? The, the text on the left is very properly aligned according to the measurement of the font. But, you know, if you would look at the text on the right, medyo nakalampas yung uh, curve ng V. It's not exactly aligned, but visually, it's more comfortable because the weight, the weight of the text uh, is aligned. Okay, so lumabas lang ng konti si swoosh. So consider that when you're designing something. Okay, so when there's something that's not aligned, the misaligned text creates a focal point. So obviously you can see the one that's misaligned. So it it actually also follows the uh, the principle of repetition and rhythm. So you make a break in the rhythm, you get a focal point. Okay, proximity. Um, it basically talks about the space between elements, more about how close elements are. Okay, like the way we group them together. So. I want you to look at the, this picture. It's just a yes or no question. Can you guys see which, uh, which data or which information should be grouped together? Just a yes or no, just type it in. Can you see? Yeah. Yeah? We can see. Yeah, we can oh, see. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, right. They're already grouped together. So you can clearly see which information goes with, you know, what image and, you know, what other explanations there are. Okay. Diba? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. also there are circles behind them. But it's not just the circles because even if we take out the circles, you can still see which need to be together. Here. Yeah. Diba? So this is what we mean when we talk about proximity. Like you create groups of ideas, especially when you're, you know, making a design that has a lot of different elements, a lot of information, you have to break them down into chunks. Like the way we break down phone numbers, right? like you have a long phone number and then you break them down into three or two digits or four digits. It's the same with the information. If you have a lot, just group them, like break them apart, break them down and then group them together. Okay, just like this one, this inf infographic. So a lot of, like, what designs or what content would require a lot of information? Posters. If you have, like, an event poster, like, for talks like this, you have to have the name of the speaker. You have to have the dates and then information about the speaker. And many elements in it. So you can break them down and group them together so they're easy to digest. Okay, so that's how you use proximity. And if you use the opposite um, here, there, if you put, you know, something away from other elements, then that creates a focal point. You have the emphasis. Okay, so that's easy to see. Now we talk about proportion. Okay, proportion is the size of the elements in relation to each other. Uh, take this for example, you have a huge lady and a tiny, tiny little bit of text. Okay, so mm, it doesn't work. Why? Because the lady's too big or the text is too small. But if you make it a little bit bigger and you make some other elements bigger, then you create a focal point. 
Okay, so sparkle is a lot bigger than the other words, so you know that that's where the emphasis should be. Con compare that with this one, where the queen is bigger. So you know that the queen is the focal point. Okay, so just showing you a quick example of how proportion works. Okay, so just um, make sure and uh, balance your size, and then if you want to create emphasis, then you know you make something else bigger. Okay, so just a quick recap. Actually, we're we're kind of two thirds done. I'll just recap the principles. You guys remember what the first one is? Just shout it out. Don't type it anymore. <laughs> Anybody? Composition. Yes, very good. And then the next one? Unity and harmony. Na nag note si Kim. Girl. like that. And then we have? Contrast. Not yet. Before balance. contrast. Symmetry. Symmetry and balance. Symmetry, Symmetry and balance. balance. Yes. Okay. And then contrast is next. Contrast. Very good. And then the next one is? Um, Repetition. Mm. Uh -huh. What pattern. else? Yun yung madami. Repetition, pattern, rhythm, and movement. Yes. Mm. Made of notes. Thank you. <laughs> and then the next one? Alignment. Alignment for the flat lay. And then the last, uh, not the last, the second to the last one? Proximity. How close things are? Proximity. Proximity. And the last one is? Proportion. Proportion. Yes. So, and that may be easy when you create a design. But like I said earlier, <laughs> very good, guys. But like what I said earlier, uh, design is very intuitive. So, if something looks off, then you got to try again. <laughs> okay, parang, parang hindi pantay. Then you, you know, you move your elements a little. Or parang ano, parang masyadong masakit sa mata. Then you adjust your color. Okay? So it's, it's highly intuitive. Uh, now we'll, we go to text a little bit. It's important because we usually combine text. So we talk about typography. We come, uh, font. Think about font. It's kind of obvious. I think this one is, you know, pretty uh, famous as well. You have to consider the font that you use because they say something. Okay, so you know both cards, both pieces of paper say, <laughs> "I, I, I will always find you." But oh no, the second one is kind of, you know, serial yeah. killer. <laughs> okay, so just consider consider your font slasher movie. Yeah. Okay, so when you think about your font, it's really difficult to find ko ano yung font na bagay. So what I do, I just I just Google it, <laughs> font combination or font pairings, and then you will find a lot of examples, and then you just choose which one. Just make sure that the font that you use uh, is uh, like it fits your brand or it fits the message that you want to say. Okay. And then, I thought I'm gonna move this like. Okay, consider the size. So a lot of us will be designing content that will be viewed on mobile. So just make sure that, you know, your text is not too small because again, if it's difficult to read, you know, people will skip it. So just scroll up and ignore what you just, you know, what you just designed. Okay. So what you can do is you test, like you post it somewhere and you make it private so that you can see if, you know, what you, writ what you wrote on your design will be visible. Um, careful that it's not too big because although it says shh, no, I won't ask you guys anymore, but it kind of feels like it's shouting at me because it's so brang laki. Okay, if, whether it's on mobile, I actually have two. I'm on my laptop and on mobile, both are screaming at me. Um, here, okay, we're back to math. You guys need to take this down or take a picture, whatever. Um, so you have title, subtitle, and your text. So for your designs, please consider the golden ratio again. Okay, it, it follows this number. It's 1.618. Okay, please take 1.618. For example, you have your main text or your title, and you need to make a subtitle for it. So just do like 88 divided by 1.618. So you come up with 54, like, 
you know, plus or minus point something. So just round it down or round it up. It's up to you. But, you know, you get the approximate number. And then if you want to create text, like the body text, then divide that again by 1.618. So if, you know, if you're doing the opposite, then you go 33 times 1.618 is 54 times 1.618, then it's 88. Okay? So this is the golden ratio. Again, it makes your images, your text, very natural, very organic. Magazines, again, use this a lot, and also websites. So you have the title, and then you have the subtext, and you have the teeny tiny body text, which all follow the golden ratio, okay? All right, let's move on. Alignment matters. Um, if you only have just a few like words that you need to put in your design, then you know you can do left or middle or center or right. Like you can do whatever, whatever works for your design. But almost like with anything, almost never use a justified alignment because it messes up with the spacing between the words. And it makes it a lot harder to read. And design-wise, it doesn't even look good. Like, uh, yeah, it's aligned on the right, but it's really difficult to look at. Okay, so actually, almost nobody um, would recommend using the last one. Okay, look at the, let's go back to the magazine spread I showed earlier. Here. So as you can see, it's all left aligned. Although there are a lot of words, none of it is, you know, justified. Okay. And then just quickly through case. Okay, case is important. Um, so most text will be like large letters. Like you have a capitalized letter and then small letters. But the second part, Charts and diagrams in all caps gives you emphasis, but not only that, you know why it gives emphasis? Because um, to the person reading it, it's a little bit, tiny bit harder to read than, you know, the mix, uh, like big and small letters. Okay, so because it slows down the brain, it gives the reader a pause, it makes a it makes the reader go slower. So that's gives it emphasis. That's why we use this when we want to highlight something. So anyway, FYI, that's the reason behind it. But if you have anything like uh, that's going from top to bottom, like this, oh, can you see it? There, if you have anything going from top to bottom, then, you know, mixed case does not work. It has to be all caps. That's the only way for it to work. So there, don't, this is what not to do. <laughs> Please do not do this. There are one, two, three, four, four fonts. Limit is three. Like as much as you can, just, you know, use three maximum. I, I usually use one or two one or two fonts and then you know no no fourth please and then the colors yeah three is max <laughs> and then the colors uh unless it's a it's about a circus like earlier i showed you the circus um infographic and <laughs> so <laughs> let's try to keep the colors um to a minimum okay and then yeah of course readable if you can see here it's very low contrast so it's hard to read already all right so just to recap on typography, uh, think about the font, think about the size, alignment, and the case, and then you combine. So you can see the picture, it follows the rule of thirds. It also follows the Fibonacci sequence. So if you use um, images like these, then it's easy to put in a text that will balance your image out. Okay, because number one, there's space for your text. And number two, like uh, this, you kind of have an imaginary line which divides your photo. And as you can see, it's balanced. Like 
the heaviness of the image of the woman is balanced by the text. Okay, so if you're starting out, then you know just look for photos like these. Uh, actually, that's the end of my presentation. Time check, nine minutes. Thank you for the time check. Um, so just to show you, like I said earlier, we use Canva. We actually invested in the fee <laughs> because you get to access a lot of um, images, a lot of different functions. Okay, that's why we like it. I also took a look at other apps or other websites. So I have Stencil, PhotoJet, Designer, Relay That, and Easel. I think most like Canva, the ones that are most like Canva are Designer and Easel in terms of you know how easy they are to use and the functions that they have. But, oh, Photopia. Okay, it's like Photoshop, but I don't know Photoshop. <laughs> I'm too lazy to do Photoshop. <laughs> Noun project, oh, thank you. So we have a couple of um, suggestions, Photopia and the Noun project. Yeah, Pixelar. Because <laughs> she can use Photoshop. Okay, um, if you're too lazy to do anything, like really, check out Relay That. I think it's really interesting in that when I checked it, you just have to put in all the elements that you want. <laughs> it's so study Photoshop. Like you put your colors, you put your images, and you put your text, and then it designs everything for you. They probably have an AI designing stuff. And then, yon, dalabas na lang yung mga suggestions, and then you can just choose from them. Although, yeah, like, your designs would not be as unique as, you know, if you did it yourself. But for some, you know, that would probably work. Okay. So, yeah, I haven't really checked out all of these, but, you know, Canva is what we use now. Adobe Spark, Portable Photoshop. I have portable Photoshop, but I try. But I don't have the requirements. <laughs> Canva is up here. Yeah, it's like it's super easy to use. So yung para sa mga tamen na tamad, ako tamad, so I use Canva. <laughs> okay, there. Yeah, quick kasi true. It has it's like PowerPoint. <laughs> PowerPoint pero may design. Parang ganon it. It's very intuitive. That's why I like it. Okay, so any questions, guys? If you have any questions, you can just say it out loud or you can type it in in the chat box. Oh, fun, yay. <laughs> thank you, all right. Looks like we don't have any questions. I wanna say thank you to you guys as well. Thank you for, oh, there's a question. Yes, Angelica. How to know you's attitude? What do you mean? Thank you, Emily. I mean, to character more. Any suggestions? Do you mean the character of your brand? You know, you can unmute. <laughs> ah, okay. Yay! Thank you. All right. So let's let's talk about your brand. Um, I think I think Donna will be talking about that next week. Tama ba, Don? Like, like how to create your brand? Yeah, but um, it will be about captioning, but it will, mm -hmm. I will be talking about um, how you, how you translate your brand into your captions. Because that's where you, that's where you really, um, I think that's where you really bring it out. But with designs, it could go with your um, if you have fonts that that you you like you have exclusively or that you use exclusively for your brand. It's best to to decide on which fonts font styles you you like or the hues or the shades of your brand. I think that's right, Aish. Tama. When you talk yeah. about design, you create, you really uh, really work on the branding and the personality or the character. Yeah, okay. So, sige, since you touched on it a little bit, mm. if you're beginning to create your brand, create a brand kit. Your brand kit contains the colors that you want. It contains the fonts that you want. 
And you also think about the style of the images that you want. Mm. Okay, so, and then you make that consistent across, like, maybe not all, but most of your designs. Because if you're pare naman lahat, then, you know, it, your content will get boring. But, yeah. um, yun, think about even, even the filters of your photos. Like, if you take your own photos of your, of your products, tapos, i-adjust mo yung, yung filter, di ba? Like, yeah, you have to fix the colors, you have to, meron siyang post-production um, treatment na gagawin. Yeah. Then, you can set, you can set a specific type of filter or adjustment levels, like, you adjust the brightness, you adjust the contrast, the, the tone, or the hues of your, your photos. Then, you, you set that. Like, Tandaan mo siya. Ilang percent ba yung... Um, oh, you can save like, With this camera that I'm using. Yeah, for, for light shots, diba? If yeah, you're using light Adobe shot. Light Shot. Uh-uh. Oh. You can use... Ay, light, light shot ba? Ano wait, 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 wait. Sorry. App? I forgot to. Lightroom. <laughs> light shot pala yung ano ko. Lightroom. Free screen ko. Wait. Yeah. Lightroom. Okay. Lightroom, Lightroom. So, Lightroom, you can, you can set... as a preset. Yes. You can set your own uh, filter. Parang ganon. So that your images would look the same. So like earlier, when we showed the photo of the flower, the high contrast flower, ano yung sabi mo, Kim? It looks like a, an image for Kenzo. What was that brand? Anyway, that's because the brand already owns that type of image. Like if you see it, parang, uy, alam ko, ano to ah. Ito yan, ito yung brand na yan. Like Coca-Cola Red is trademarked. Parang ganon. So think of your trademarks. Ano yung font na lagi mong gagamitan? Like, when people see it, ah, alam ko na, um, see na to. Ito yung brand na to. Also, with the colors and the look of the images that you're creating. I have so, one, there, if you're one starting more thing out. to add. With a brand, hmm. kid, don't forget your logos. They, like, the images hmm. and, the, and the colors or the hues and the fonts that you would be using should really be, uh, should really reflect the look of your logos too. Right? I would say you start with a logo, right? Yeah, start if with a logo. If you're creating a brand. Yeah. Yeah. That's the first thing. <laughs> you have to put some time into it. You have to put a lot of work into it. It's not mm-hmm. just like, sige, okay na yan, or something like that. So it yeah. has to be you. And if you have a graphic artist, if you commission, if you can commission somebody to do it for you, then by all means, like invest in it because that's going to be your brand. Right. And then if you're designing it yourself, then be patient because like I said earlier, it, it takes a lot of, um, like you, you have to make a lot of drafts just so that you can end up with something that you're happy with. And then you show it to other people. Does it, does it communicate to you what I want to say? Okay, or does it, what does this tell you? Can you read it at, at one glance? Can you understand it? And then you get feedback, and then you go back to your design, and then you, you improve. So that's how you, you create a brand kit, actually. <laughs> you got to get feedback. So that, don't just think about everything yourself. You need to get help. <laughs> okay, any other questions? No more? No more. Okay, so a lot of people already said thank you. Again, guys, we thank you. Oh, cameras on, please. We'll just take a class picture. Class picture. Thank you, Yana. Hey, everybody. One, two, three. Saudis! 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 <laughs> thank you, guys! Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Katrina, thank you, thank you. Wow. 